Welcome everyone to our Monday night shiur. Our shiur is sponsored first by the anonymous sponsor. Hashem should bless him with brachava, tzachai, yishu, gudolod. Many kids. Amen. That was the request. I say it how it is. Baruch Hashem. There are people out there who want to have many kids. And also, the nishmat, tzipora bat malmal, zilpa bat malmal, tzachai, you confused. Uh, Gabriel ben mafrat, and also my grandmother. This Shabbat is her yard site. Her name was Tipora Bat Adina. Ruach Hashem Tinichem began Eden. Amen. I also want to make a small thing. Whoever is not in the Shiur the rest of the weeks, this Thursday night is the Hilula of the Orachayim Akadosh. Rabbi Chaim ben Atar. We know Rabbi Chaim ben Atar. He was buried in Harazetim. He was supposed to be Mashiach ben Yosef. Him and the Baal Shem Tov, him, both them in that generation, was Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef. Baal Shem Tov was Nefesh Da Atzilut, or Achaim was Ruach Da Atzilut. He's, Baal Shem Tov said that about the Or Achaim. So uh, we all know the famous story that Baal Shem Tov went, wanted to go to Eretz Yisrael. He, he had a Tehillim of David HaMelech, and he threw that Tehillim into the water. Into the water. So he could make it to Eretz Yisrael, but at the end of the day, he never got over there. And he said, if I would meet the Or Achaim HaKadosh, it would be the end of the Galut. Or Chaim Makadosh, Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, never had any children. He passed away at the age of 47, very young. The Yom Kippur, before he was passing away during Ne'ila, Ne'ila is when we closed the, the Heichal, he saw, he said, I'm going to pass away this year. He saw it, it's, it's recorded down. He said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make it this year. Just like the Kohen Gadol, when Shimon Sadiq, he was 40 years Kohen Gadol. One year he told his Talmidim, this year I'm not going to make it. Shimon Tzadik, the last of the Anshik, this is the Gedola. The whole war that just happened right now with the Arabs, that was over the Shimon Tzadik. Arabs call it Sheikh Jarach. We call it Shimon Tzadik. So Shimon Tzadik, for 40 years he was Kohen Gadol. He went in, he said, how do you know you're going to pass away this year? He says, 40 years I'm Kohen Gadol, every year I go into the Kodesh HaKodashim. I see someone coming inside with me dressed in white, and I see somebody coming outside with me dressed in white. This year, he said, I saw somebody walk inside with me dressed in black, and he didn't come out with me. I know I'm gonna pass away this year. So Rabbi Chaim ben Atar, similarly, he said on the Yom Kippur, the Eila of that year, Gabriel, he said, I'm gonna pass away this year, lo aleinu, and lo ala klal Yisrael, and he passed away. Why do I mention Rabbi Chaim ben Atar? All the power to have children, he put in his book. I remember going as a, not as a kid, but as a teenager to the square. You know, square, the yeah. new square. You guys, I don't think you guys have been there. You guys have been there? You been? Oh, yeah, you guys have been there. So I was there for Shabbos. La Manachai, the yeshiva that I teach, they go there every single uh, every every year. Parashat Acharemot Kedoshim. Every year they go there, take the kids over there. I went one year. I was a, a teacher, one of my first years, I went over there. If you look at their library, there's no uh, commentaries in the Torah over there, only one. Orachayim HaKadosh. The whole thing is Orachayim's, 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 Orachayim's. Why? Baal Shem Tov said that he was Mashiach ben Yosef, he was Ruach da Atzilut, we're going to learn him. There is another Sigula. This is from Rabbi Avram Aronovich. He was a big tzaddik. We have Rama Aronovich. He was one of the Lamed of Tzadikim. Lamed of Tzadikim. He said, whoever learns the book of the Or Chaim Makadosh is a sigula to have children. When I have kids, you don't need to go to bit Kvarot, Kivet Tzadikim. Rabbi Aram Aronovich said, you want to have Tzadikim. Why? All the power to have children, he put inside this book. He didn't have kids himself. But all the power that he had to have kids, he put in his book, Or Chaim Makadosh. That's why he's named his book Chaim. What is Chaim? Life. We know three people are considered dead. A person who has no children, a person who is blind, and a person who is? Who is poor. Is there an English Huh? Or a Chaim? Yes. Art scroll. Look at the gradient. I didn't mention Zerah Shem. I'm talking about Or Chaim Makadosh. Now you're talking about Zerah Shem Shom. Raboisa, come on. I know you're from Kew Gardens. You like Zerah Shem Shom. But we're in uh, Garden Hills over here. We're with Or Chaim Makadosh. But yeah. Or Achaim Makadosh. Or Achaim. It's art scroll translated the book. They translated it. 
And uh, anyone could go to Gift World over here, they could buy themselves a copy of the Orachayim HaKadosh. It's one of the greatest. If I'm his Hilula is this Thursday night. We're going to be here for Mishnayot. So with the Mishnayot, we're going to do a nice Hilula for him. We'll do Mishnayot first, then we're going to go to the Hilula. Bezrat Hashem Yitbarach. Whoever's going to join in the Hilula, it's a Sigula. Every year we do the Hilula, by the way. Thursday night, Thursday night. Yeah. Mishmar, Mishmar. It's on Mishmar. Or, no, no, that's Orach. Chaim. That's Orach Chaim. Easily to uh, confuse. Now, tonight is the Hilula of no other than the Balaturim. Rabbeinu Yaakov ben Rabbi Asher. Today is his Hilula. He was the son of the Rosh. The Arba Turim, you guys know from, you guys come to the Beta Knesset on Shabbat. I talked about him a lot. The Rabbi Yaakov ben Rabbi Asher. He was the son of the Rosh. He wrote a book called the Arba Turim. It was the pretext, the pre, the first book of the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch based his perush, based his not perush, based his Torah on the Arbaturim. Who is the Arbaturim? Why did he write it? Real quick. When the Rambam wrote his book, the Mishnah Torah, it took him ten years to write the Mishnah Torah. Now, just to give you, you know, what ten years is. That's a nice chunk of your life, 10 years. When the Rambam wrote the, or, uh, the Mishnah Torah that night when he finished it, he saw his father be Maimon in a dream and with him was another man. And he said it was Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu told the Rambam, Yishar Koach, good for you. You did something that no other human being succeeded. And this they said, Mi Moshe al Moshe lokam. Moshe. Look at the Mishnah, look at the Gemara. You're not going to find one rabbi that's name is Moshe. Open up the Mishnayot. All the Tanaim and Morim. Not one of them's name is Moshe. The first rabbi we see after Moshe Rabbeinu with the name Moshe is no other than... <laughs> he's much after. But Moshe ben Maimon, the Rambam. The Rambam, but you could say similarly from Rambam to Rav Moshe Feinstein, there was nobody like... Moshe too. Uh, Moshe Kordaver, yeah. In Halacha. In Halacha. It's true, there were many more. Uh, Chatham Sofer and Moshe Sofer. There were many big tzaddikim. Uh, Moshe Al Sheikh, in Why did you bring up these three people from the So, why did I bring those three people that whoever doesn't have these three things that consider like they passed away? A person has to understand that their job in this world, and I tell this to people. And they laugh at me because I think I'm the only one who says this. More important than learning Torah in this generation, more important than tzedakot and everything is to bring children to this world. That's the most important thing in this generation. Why? I'll tell you why. I'm not saying this out of my head. The Gemara asks a question. It's also in Tana Dabe Eliyahu. How did the Jews leave Egypt out of, out of, uh, out of 400 years, 210 years? The babies. And the Tanah Darbe Eliyahu, the Gemara says, point blank, they had a lot of babies. If we would have the same Yiluda as the Arabs, Mashiach would have came a hundred years ago. <coughs> but to our, but to our, you understand, to our uh, thing, we, they, didn't have, they don't have Cherem Rabbeinu Gershom. You understand? But at the same time, we have to understand it. One thing I do, I teach uh, Chatanim. Sometimes by force. It's not something that I look that I run after. And when I teach Chatanin, people who are about to get married, what's the first thing they ask me or my wife? When can I take birth control? Do I have idea? You're not even married yet. You already want to take birth control for the love of God. And guys and girls, I mean, girls don't ask me, ask my wife. And I'm so perplexed by the fact because, you know, for me, I dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I dive into Hashem that Hashem should be marchiv, my givulot, should have more kids. You understand? I don't want to stop because I know the, 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 you know, having children is like shacharit mincha aravit of the whole year plus Pesach plus Shavuot plus Sukkot. The moment you're with your wife, you're doing such a zivu. You're doing such a zivu. So the Orachayim didn't have it. That's why I brought this up. The Orachayim didn't have it. But he put all that power, imagine that Tzadik put that power inside his book of the Orachayim HaKadosh. That's why Tzadikim and especially Hasidim, they try to learn his book Orachayim HaKadosh every Shabbat. Every single Shabbat. Now back to what we were saying before. Rabbeinu Yaakov Balaturim. 
he wrote the, the small history point. Unfortunately, in Yeshivot today, they don't teach Jewish history. And when those Palestinians and all their uh, klipot, when they wake up, and they say, you Jews don't have Eretz Yisrael, it's not yours, this and that, the regular Jew doesn't know what to answer back. If you only knew, Hamisha Chumshe Torah, he could have wiped these guys out of the, um, into the toilet and flush it. But they don't know even Hamisha Chumshe Torah, but basic history, basic Nevi'im, basic uh, nothing. The reason is, is because we don't teach them. We don't teach them. History is a very dry subject. I always found it fascinating. That's why you see different Shorshe Nishamut, different sources of Nishamut. You understand? You can. Whatever one somebody likes here, whoever likes chocolate doesn't like vanilla. Whoever likes vanilla doesn't like a cookie dough. Cookie dough doesn't like this. Everyone is different. However, we have an obligation to teach Jewish history. Because without Jewish history, as the Pasuk says, Zechor Yamot Olam, remember the days of old. We don't need to know Turkish history. We don't, to be, we don't need to know about Suleiman the Magnificent. This is, it's, it's a beautiful story, but it's Shtuyot. You understand? It's Shtuyot. You gotta know your history. Why? Seven, if you live to the age of 70, you're good. Says David if you get to 80, Oh, you, you got to a good age. If you get above 80, you know what more than 80 means? Yeah. You already have no taste to life. How many times do you get to the people above the age of 80? Like, what's my taste in life? Now look at this, look at this. Person gets to the age of 20. He thinks he's going to grab the world. 20 plus 20 plus 20, you're already age 60. What do you have at 60 already? What can you accomplish already? But you think that's why a person, a kid is born. He's, how is he born? With his hands clenched tight. Why? He's going to grab the whole world. He passes away with his hands open. A person passes away. He says, why? What did you already reach? I always tell this to kids in my class. I say, you guys want to have beautiful watches, Rolex, Schmolex, beautiful cars. I said, you know what it is to have a child? Do you know what it is to have a wife? Do you know what it is to have Shalom Bait? <coughs> shalom Bait? Shalom Bait doesn't come easy. Shalom Bait comes with work. Huh? Bait. Bait does that have? Rabbi Yosei, lo karali ishto. Ishti, what did he call his wife? Beti. You have to go to a guy who's married 30, 40 years. You have to say, give me a baracha. And the girls have to go to a woman who's married 30, 40 years and say, give me a baracha. What do you think this comes easy? It comes with intense work. A work of character. <laughs> now let's look at the parasha. I'm going to tell you something crazy about this week's parasha. This whole parasha is based, is based on Bil'am Harasha breaking the Jewish home. That's all it is. Bil'am Harasha with Balak. Al tikre Balak, el tikare Black. His whole job this week's parasha is to break the Jewish home. And I'll tell you why. Bil'am Harasha starts to give blessings. Nachon olo. Toda. I like that. He's getting ready for Eric to start. Bilam Harasha, he gets to, and he starts to bless. And you know, did you guys read the blessings in the parasha? It's some major stuff over there. And not only that, it's some major prophecies. Bilam Harasha is the first to prophesy about Mashiach. The first. Adam had three kids. Hevel, Cain, Cain, Hevel, and Sheth, right? You know what Bilam says? There will be a man that will break all the skulls of the sons of Sheth. Cain and Hevel, they were done, right? All of Cain's descendants went in the flood. Hevel was killed. So who are we descendants of? Sheth. Bilam says there will be a man that will break the skulls. Karkar kol b'nei Sheth. The Ari says that the Mashiach Tzitkenu. Moshe didn't prophesy about Mashiach. Bilam Arasha at that time. He, what does he call himself? Yodea Dat Elion. He saw Dat, you know what Dat Elion is? 
No man has reached Da'at Elyon. Bilam saw Da'at Elyon and he said, I see Mashiach. He will destroy Moab, that's David Melech, and destroy Sheth. That means Bil'am was a prophet. He saw that through the Trumpadah? He saw that at that moment through Kedusha. Through Kedusha. In fact, the Zohar HaKadosh says something so... S- we have to cry. You know, if a Goy could reach such a level, we as Jewish people, what are we... There's a story of Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld. It says it, the story like this. If a Goy, by dipping in a mikveh, could turn into a Jew, what happens when a Jew dips in a mikveh? We know what our, our potential is. People are looking for Sigulo just for a small side point. But if you open up the Sefer and you learn and you daven and you pray to Hashem, you think Hashem is not going to answer you? Why doesn't He answer you? When you go to work out, what's the biggest problem, Ariel? You're not? You're not consistent. Motivation is kind of consistent. Sometimes you can be motivated, you're just not consistent. You can't make it. You're not consistent, you're not going to make it. If you daven for one thing, like a nutnik to HaKadosh Baruch Hu every day, three times a day, four times a day, you daven to him all the... You know why? Because you're still not consistent enough. If you're going to daven and daven and daven and daven, you're going to make it. Look at Bil'am HaRasha. How did he get his nivuah? By being with a donkey. That's what happens when we don't do pidyon pedarach amor. It goes to the klipa. And you know what? He was consistent. Yes, you're right. He was consistent to being with his donkey. And I'll tell you why. When he was talking to his donkey, she donkey, he sees the donkey, and the donkey sees the, the, the mule, the female. She sees the angel. Bil'am starts to smack her. Three times he smacks her. So she tells him, Abi Iftah Hashem et Pia Aton. He says, Lama Zei Kitani Shalosh Regalim. Just that sentence is a shiur, by the way. Shalosh Regalim. Just that sentence is a shiur. Okay, let's pass that for a sec. So he says to her, It's like it was something uh, normal for him to see a donkey speak. He says, Because you. Sway from the derech. You went more from the derech. So he says to him, aren't I your donkey? What did she mean by... What do you in my head over here? Is a lady, that's why. <laughs> what did she mean by that? So Rashi explains, she says, aren't I the donkey that helped you in the day and helped and served you in the night? We're a couple. Yeah, we're a couple. I'm your wife. Bemeth. And she tells, and he tells her back, no, you're just there, you know, uh... Once a while, you know, when I decide to turn into Uzbek, then I'm uh, regular in that. I'm uh, I don't know, I'm Arabi. I don't know what they do, but who knows? So she told him, "Ani otencha atoncha sherachafta ola alai meodecha adayom azay." You know that? You know what she meant when she said that? I'm your donkey that you visit three times a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. When the Zikne Moab heard what she said, what does it say in the Pasuk? They disappear. Who keeps on going with him? Zikne Midian. The Moabites. Where do they come from, Moab? From a father and a daughter. When they heard that was Bilam, they said, we can't deal with this guy. We're done with him. They got up and they left. Goyim. Goyim of back in the day. What did Bilam continue doing? He kept on going. Now I'm going to answer your question. When Bilam went, every time he goes and says a prophecy, he says to Bilam, so, to Balak, so said to me God, and so you shall say, what word he uses and so you shall say? The letter is Chaf. Hey. You guys know that there was a very big Mikubal, Tzadik Yesod Olam, Rabbeinu Shalom Mizrahi Didi Asher Abi, the Rashash HaKadosh. When he used to reach this passage in the Zohar HaKadosh, Vekotid Aber in Parashat Bilam, he used to cry. Who could have a Zechut, a Zechut, like Bilam Arasha, that called the Shechina, God's divine presence, should speak from his throat. Who could have the zikhud that the shekhinah? We! 
we are Jewish people with Brit Milas, with uh, Torah, with mitzvot, umasim tovim. We don't have the zechut that the Shekhinah shall speak from our throat. And this Rasha who slept with his female donkey three times a day, seven days a week, the whole year, he had the zechut that the Shekhinah should speak from his throat. The Ari asks, why? Why did that generation? Why did that? You know, can I tell you something crazy? All this is happening, the Jews don't know that it's happening. How could they? This was all happening behind the scenes. And God tells Moshe as it's happening, write it down. And one of the ten remembrances that we have to remember every day. Remember what Balak and Bala and Bilam did to you. Laman datit kodashem. Every day you have to remember ten things. Yetziat Mitzrayim, Hashabbat, Haman, Maseam, Malek Arasha. What God did to Miriam, Balak, the Egel Azahav. Yerushalayim, I said that Yerushalayim will be rebuilt. And God is the one that gives you chayil. Ten remembrances. One of them is what? Balak and Bilam. Every day you have to remember that. And I'm gonna, if I could just have a moment to get into the deep point over here. What, who, what was the souls of Balak and Bilam? You know what it's connected to? Amalek. Amalek, true. But it's connected before that to Lavan Arami. Remember when Lavan saw Rachel on the camels? She was sitting on Trafim. And Rachel told uh, Lavan, her father, I cannot get up. Derech Nashim Li. She lied. To save Yaakov from the Trafim, the the, those Terafim, you know Lavan, you know who Lavan is? How do you spell Lavan? Lamed, Bet, Nun. La, Lamed is what? Lavan. Bet is Bil'am. And third is Naval. Who's Naval? Bil'am's Gilgul. It was a Jew. Bil'am came back as a Jew. Who's Naval? Naval, yeah. Navala Carmeli. Abigail. Yeah, Abigail's ex-husband, let's call him. But first, Bil'am had to come back in a rock. In a wood. If you make Averot, says the Ari, I have the book over, over here, Sefer Gilgulim. Take my word for it. If the, the Ari says, if a person does a lot of Averot with his mouth, talks in a Beta Knesset, especially during Chazara, and during Kreta Torah, and a person speaks Lashon Hara, Moti Shemra, Sheker, he comes back in an inanimate object in the Even. Bless. Two by four is good. That's a uh, condo. That's a, in the Trump Tower condo. Right. Two by four. That's, that's, yeah. But at the same time, Bilam came back as a Jew. And who was Bilam's teacher? You know who Bilam's teachers were? Azai and Azael. Angels? Those the two angels. angels. The fallen angels? Yeah, the fallen angels. Azai and Azael. Those were his teachers. Yeah, exactly. They were alive still? They were alive. Azai and Azael. And the Ari explains how, why Azai and Azael were his teachers. And Azab and Azael, what was their main focus in life? To destroy Adam. They told Hashem, Ma ada, Ma enosh Who is man? Who is, why should you even think of him? They were the fallen angels. They, why, who is the man? Hanak Shiba Anakim, Moshe. Bil'am tried to destroy Moshe. And Azab and Azael were, Moshe's te- were Bil'am's teachers. This whole parasha that we're talking about right now, the Ariya Kadosh once fell asleep on Shabbat, and while he was sleeping, Rabbi Avraham Alevi Beruchim saw him talking in his sleep. He asked him, Rabbi, when he woke up, what were you saying? He says, I was learning in the Zohar Harakia. 80 years, if I will tell you right now from today, 80 years I will talk, what the donkey said to Bil'am, it wouldn't be enough. There was once a teacher in school. He had one kid, it was a bit... And Malasos. So one time the student, the Rebbe asked the, the teacher, the Rebbe asked the student, says to him, you know the answer to the kushia? 700 times I'm telling you. You're afraid I said 400 times. Yet Olam Haban, 400 years of life. I'm telling you 700 times already. Do you know the answer to the kushia? So he tells him some stupid answer. And he tells him, yeah, that's what it says in the Pasuk. And God opened up the mouth of the donkey. So the student was sharp when he wants to be. And he answered that. And that's what he said to Bilam. He tells it back to the teacher. When a, when a Jew wants to be sharp, he's sharp. It takes him two seconds. When he... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And the angels have come. 
both Michael and Gabriel just came from the Gan Eden, Aelion. So when a Jew wants to be sharp, he knows what to say right away. But if he wants to be, then nothing is going to help him. Nothing's going to help. I'm going to tell you a different secret over here. Bil'am, this whole week's parasha, tried to teach us one thing. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says that of all Bil'am's blessings, all of them turned down to be curses. Sanhedrin, Gemara Sanhedrin. Except for what? Can anybody tell me what was that one blessing that came out to be a blessing? That one prophecy that came out to be a blessing? You have no idea. Matovu o alecha Yaakov Mishkanodach. Anyone who went to Ashkenazi Yeshiva knows Ashkenazim start their tefillah. Matovu o alecha Yaakov Mishkanodach Yisruai. I said it good. You have no idea what that. What in the world are you saying? That's how they started to feel. My, how do I know my son? Comes home, he has a sidur. So the tefillah, that why they started with this, the Gemara Sanhedrin says, out of all the blessings of Bilam, only one came out to be a true blessing. What was that blessing? You know what it was? In the desert when they traveled, Rashi says, the Jews had a minhag. When they used to pitch their tents or their huts, when they used to make their huts, Every hut was every window. Every window. They were corresponding. They were connected, opposite each one's opening, everyone's door. It means you would never know when this one's wife went to the mikveh, what this one was doing. Your front door is his. Your front door was his back door. You didn't have the idea. From here we get the halakha, one of the sources that a person should never tell when you get married. A woman should never tell anyone. When she's going to the mikvah, or not because I have It's pre-tzut. Even your mother-in-law shouldn't know when, especially your mother-in-law, <laughs> when you're going to the mikvah. Nobody's allowed to know. It's davar kadosh. If they ask, are you allowed to lie? Yes, you must lie. In fact, the Gemara says a, uh, a question. If a woman tells. Her, she's supposed to go to the mikveh tonight. Then her mother-in-law says, Oh, when are you going to the mikveh? And she says, Oh, I'm still tameh. Then that night she comes home from the mikveh. She says, your husband says, What are you talking about? You just said to my mom that you're tameh. She, she has a good excuse. She says, I was trying to keep a tzni'ut inside the house. When Bil'am saw, Matovu o alecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Yisrael, what was his next advice to Balak? Break it. Arayot. Balak knew, Abilam knew, what was the secret to Klal Yisrael? Taharat HaMishpacha. Once Taharat HaMishpacha goes, Klal Yisrael goes to Timayon. So what was, what was Bilam's next advice? Send the Goyot. Send the Goyot. The Zohar HaKadosh says there is no Avera worse than putting your Brit Milah b'makom so Rabbi Udaftaya asked a question, how do you put your Brit Milah in Makoma Tum'ah? When does Avraham Avinu not save you? When does he not save you, Be'emet? Rabbi Udaftaya is a chidush. He says if a person has shalom does the Avera, he wastes, you guys know what I'm talking about, there's still a chance for Avraham Avinu to save you. But if you go with a Goya, when you do the Avera of Nida, Shivcha, Goya, Vezona, four Averot in one. The Beidin of which, let's see who knows, which Beidin was made this Takana, which Beidin, which Sanhedrin, I'll give you a. Uh, huh? Uh, King David made the Takana of Yehud. Uh, after, but you're getting closer. I'll give you a hint that has to do with one of the holidays of the Jewish people. Uh. Mordechai, yeah. Chanukah. What was their Beit Din called? Chashmonaim. The Hasmanims. The Maccabim. The Hashmonaim were the were the ones who said, "Any ones who's with a goya over al four isure doraita nida shivcha goya ve zona." In this week's parasha, we see a story, bless you, 
how a nasi of color. You know what a nasi is? You think they chose nasi out of political uh, news yeah. or another Naftali Bennett? Lo alein. You know who this nasi was? If a million Rabovadias with Rav Haim Kanievskis and uh, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's and every one of them will not reach to the level of a nasi of Kali Yisrael in the Midbar. A million of them. I said the biggest. Let's add the Ari in there with the Benish High and the Rashash. With the Rambam, just for good measure. What made them so different? They saw God. The, I mean, they <laughs> went. I mean, they went. They you know? they Imagine you live every day and your Parnassah is by your door. Just the thought of that you should change you. Just a, it's like a, it's a direct deposit, but this is not direct deposit from Joe Biden. This is direct deposit from God Himself. Yes, it changed the 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 the, the, uh, the ability of those people. These people learned Torah from the greatest of prophets. You know what it means to learn that from Moshe Rabbeinu. I sometimes think to myself in my in my sometimes when I walk, I say. Am I waiting for Mashiach or I will ask Hashem to go back in time to learn from Moshe Rabbein? Sometimes I have this thought inside my head. Is it better to learn from Mashiach? Or, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I would want to go back to learn from Moshe. He saw God. Not saw, so, but he fathomed God in a way no one else could fathom him. Imagine learning from and seeing Aaron. The, the first Kohen Gadol. Seeing the earth open up and swallow Korach. I mean, you would have to be on a crazy level. Just the thought of it makes me go crazy. And this guy takes this Midianit to Moshe and says to him, Muteret, look how the Jew goes. Is she, he doesn't go right or do the other. He asks him, is she Mutar or she's Asur? What does Moshe say? Asur, who allowed your wife? She's a Midianite. At that moment, Moshe could have just said, this was before the Torah. This was, he could have said, you convert her. When you're in that moment, Hashem wanted to give the bracha to Pinchas. Who was the Gilgul of Pinchas? Hey. Yosef HaTzadik himself. The Ari says in Shara Gilgulim, that's why, just like Yosef defeated his Yetzirah with the wife of Potiphar, so too he was able to defeat Kuzbi Batsur, who came to destroy Moshe Rabbeinu. Gilgul with Gilgul. She comes to him, and you know what the Gemara says? Not the Gemara, the Zohar says. And the Ari brings down in Sefer a Gilgulim. He says, Hashem put supernatural power into, into, Zimri, into Zimri. He was with her. How many soldiers came with Esau? 400, 400 times. It's not even possible. Only in that generation such a thing could be possible. So no, he was not Sultan Suleiman. Relax yourself. So yeah. He wanted to turn Pinhas into a Kohen. Hashem, you were going into a very deep uh, thing over here, but Pinhas, it was waiting for him from six days of creation to turn into a Kohen. This was the conduit at that moment. This was the derech, could have come a different derech. But at this moment, this was the derech. Once the avon was already happening, once it was already happening, Moshe didn't have the ability to say, kanaim pogin. But that means the mitzvah is, very soon Mashiach is coming, we all feel it. Amen. If we see a Jew being with a goya in a club or something, going to live with her, it's a mitzvah for every single Jew, without edim, without anything, to take the, how do you call it? The, 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 the mechanic? You gotta take the thing and you could shoot him to death at that moment. I said when Mashiach comes. <laughs> exactly. You don't go to jail. Wait, if. Uh, <laughs> you got a pink ticket, yeah. It's a mitzvah. Why? Not because you hate Goyim, because you just have a different job in this world. And a Goy has a different job in this world. If you open up the book of Zechariah, if you look at the Chagai Malachi, the prophets, the Goyim have a place in the time of Mashiach. Not just, not just us. Not just us. 
They're also going to live in Jerusalem. It's going to be only Jews in the... <laughs> you know what's going to be over there? <laughs> only Jews in the world? <laughs> it's going to be... <laughs> we don't even want to know what's going to be. At the same time, Kana, how come Moshe couldn't say it? Kanaim Pogimbo. How come he couldn't say it? Do you know who Cosby was? The daughter of Balak. You know who Balak was? The son of Yitro. What? Who's Yitro? Oh, yeah. The father of Moshe. So who's Cosby? His niece. Moshe's niece. Whoa, whoa, whoa. that's why you come to this year, the year of Chidut. See, I got him into a Chidut. Vayar Balak Ben Sipor. Sipor is Yitro. Also Mashiach. Sipor is Yitro. What was Sipor's daughter's name? What is the Yitro's daughter's name? Sipora. Why did he call her Sipora? That was his Avodah Zarah. Tipo. He called his daughter after Abu Zarah. That's why Yitro, Yitro also forced Moshe to call his son Gershom. What's Gershom mean? Yeah. Your first son is to Abu Zarah, Yitro said. Who came to kill Cosby and, uh, and uh, Zimri? Pinhas. The Ari says Pinchas' neshama was combined of two souls, Yitro's and Yosef's. Why? Rashi says, what does Rashi say? Hare'ita ben putize, all the shvatim, you see this ben puti? Suddenly he's a tzav. What does ben puti mean? Rashi says two pirushim, one, ben puti shepit pem agalim la'avodazara. He made a galim to Avodah Zarah. Who made? Yitro. Yitro. Because Pinchas' grandfather is who? Yitro. El Azar married his, his, his uncle's the sis, uh, the sister-in-law, which is Yitro's daughter. Uh, uh, El Azar and Moshe were what? Bojaz. Were Bojaz. And Pinchas is also the, the Nitzot of Yosef. So what is the second Perush in Rashi? Shepit Pet Yitro. That he destroyed his Yetzirah. How do these two Perushim uh, make sense only in Kabbalah? Because on one hand he was Yitro, and on the other hand he was who? Yosef. And who does he come to fight? Cosby and Zimri. Zimri. Who's Cosby? Yitro's granddaughter. That's his niece. Though. I mean, his wife's niece. Exactly. And that's Pinchas' cousin. Yeah. That's Pinchas' yeah. cousin. Who is Goliath? Goliath. David's, David's cousin. Yeah. Now you know this too. And it's David's cousin. There, they were cousins. How Orpah's son is Goliath. Ruth's great great grandson is David. Sisters. Habibi, it's all in the family. Everything is in the family, Rebbe. Huh? Now let's. When when Pinhas killed Zimri. And Cosby, it says he went inside a Kuba. What's Kuba? What's Kuba? You should say a tent, right? But it says the word Kuba. Kuba is Kuba shel zonot. The Kuf and Bet of Kuba is the Kuf of Bet and Balak. It's the Kuf of Bet and Balak. At that moment when he killed Zimri, he fixed the Bet and the Kuf of Balak. He fixed Balak. And what came out of Balak afterwards? Ruth Hamuavia and David Amen. So if it wasn't for Pinhas that would have come inside and, 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 and at the moment in the, in the thing and knocked them out of the Kuba, who wouldn't have come out? Yeah. David Amen, which is Mashiach. Do you understand how the whole Torah connects? I'm going to end. I didn't get even to the Bala Turim because it's, it's already late. I'm going to end with a, a, a Navi. The Navi in Zechariah says, chapter 13, I believe. Everyone should read the Navi. Every day, take upon yourself, read two chapters of the Navi. You must. You cannot take the whole Torah and put it on the side. A Kritmach. A Kritmach. A guy who, who bows down to the cross. He knows Isaiah better than you. True. 
How? Come on. Rabbi Boy said, we have to, when the Kedushah doesn't take it, then the Kalipah comes and takes it. The prophet Zachariah, which was the last three prophets, we had last three prophets, remember this. Chagai, Zachariah, and Malachi. Thank you very much. Just as a side point, what was the last prophecy Malachi had? That's the last prophecy we ever had. We're coming back. And we're coming back strong. Eliyahu Anavi is on his way. We're waiting for him. Hey, by the way, he can't come on a Friday or a Saturday night. Remember that. The Gemara in Eruvin says he's not coming on a Friday or a Saturday night. Why? We're preparing for Shabbos. You think so? Kitvarecha. <laughs> Anywho, so Zachariah says a prophecy in the future Mashiach ben Yosef will die. Zachariah says. And when they will die, the Jews will cry over the two crowns. What are the two crowns? Keter David. Keter Melucha and Keter Keuna. We have Keter Torah. If we wouldn't have Keter Torah, we wouldn't be here today. It's the only thing that's keeping us alive. We're missing two Ketarim, two crowns. Keter Melucha and Keter Keuna. We're losing the kingship and we're losing the Kohenship, the priesthood. Why are we going to cry? Because until we don't ask for them, we're not going to get it. Every person should ask in his tefillah that Hashem should return all three Ketarim. Keter Torah, Keter Keuna, and Keter Melucha. Because until these three Ketarim will not come back to Klal Yisrael, we will never be as we once were and even greater. So I give a bracha to everyone over here and I hope you guys also give me the bracha. We should be zoche Lebiat Mashiach Tzidkeinu Lekdushat Pinchas Ben Elazar Ben Arona Kohen Lekdushat Shalom Bayit Lebracha Velatzlacha Zivugim Agunim Torah Mitzvot Maasim Tovim Hashem Izakeinu Leitkadesh Bekdushat Habrit כמו שפינחס יתקנה בקדושת הברית, ככה אנחנו נתקנה בקדושת הברית. מה שם יקדש אותנו בכל האישות, בכל הצלחות, ברוך אדוני לעולם. אמן ואמן. רבי חנן הקשייה אומר, רצה הקדוש ברוך הוא לזכות אדי, צריך להיות, הבנתם, יגדיל.